Good evening. Could you introduce yourself to the court, please? Well, good evening. I'm Emerson Couples. I'm a psychologist and a professor at the University of Iowa. So Dr. Couples, what education have you received to qualify you for those positions? Uh, back in the year 2000, I completed my uh, bachelor's in psychology from McAllister College. After that, I went to the University of Illinois, got a master's in psychology. Uh, I then stayed at the University of Illinois, did some research, completed my PhD in 2006, focusing more on abnormal child psychology. So in addition to that education, Dr. Couples, do you have any accompanying board certification? All of my research for my PhD, through my years as a college professor and all my research and its contributions, I've now become an elected fellow of the American Psychological Association. You mentioned contributions. Do your contributions to your field include any published work or research? I've written three textbooks, uh, one of which is now a textbook used in standard introductory undergraduate abnormal psychology courses. I've also written or co-authored 25 peer-reviewed articles. In two of those, I've actually done a diagnosis of a child under the age of 16 with the disorder of psychopathy. So then what is your role in investigating today's trial? I was asked to determine uh, to see if there is a uh, there's a psychological condition that could explain why Jesse pointed a gun at Sydney Park on August 18, 2010. When you began your investigation, Dr. Couples, did you have access to sufficient facts and data? Uh, I was provided with several affidavits, uh, a cartoon that Jesse Duran drew, along with the suspension notice that Jesse got. I also went on to interview 20 other people, babysitters, teachers, classmates, people who personally knew Jesse Duran. And in addition to that, did you have reliable scientific principles and methods at your disposal in order to analyze those facts and data that you collected? To determine if someone Jesse Duran's age has psychopathy, psychologists and psychiatrists use the Psychopathy Assessment Instrument for Juveniles, for short, the PAGE test. So can you tell us a little bit more about the PAGE test? How does this test work exactly? The test takes uh, personality traits that are consistently present in children with psychopathy and it compares them to the individual in question. And for each of those traits, a score is given from 0 to 2, 2 being the maximum. If a score of 12 out of 20 is reached, or, higher, or 12 or higher is reached, the individual is diagnosed with psychopathy. Now you mentioned the term psychopathy, Dr. Couples. Could you please define what psychopathy is for the courts? Psychopathy is a behavioral personality disorder. Now, individuals with this, they're still very rational, very smart but they experience emotions differently than the rest of us. See, they don't really see other people as people, not even as friends. Everyone is just a tool, a means to an end. It makes them capable of extreme behavior, including shooting their 11-year-old best friend. Objection, Your Honor. Testimony is more prejudicial than probative. Your Honor, the bar for a substantially more prejudicial than probative objection is very high. If this has substantial probative value, then this objection cannot be sustained. Now, the probative value of this testimony is to, is to go to show that this condition that Jesse Durand is supposed, supposedly has does affect his actions in meaningful ways and could affect his actions on August 18, 2010. Now, since the plaintiff in today's case is pursuing a charge of intentional shooting, any evidence which goes to show that an individual charged with this would be capable of committing the act directly goes to strengthen our case in chief. This directly goes to strengthen our case in chief by showing that Jesse Durant has a, a case which has been known to cause people to act in certain ways like this. I definitely think there's probative value here. How is it uh, more, how is it substantially more prejudicial? Uh, saying that a psychopath would have the ability to shoot an 11 year old girl tends to inflame the emotions of the jury. At this point of their direct examination, they have not even established uh, their claim that Jesse is in fact suffering from this mental condition. So at this point, it would inflame the emotions of the jury, and for that purpose, it will be more prejudicial. Well, I'm going to overrule it. I think he's describing what somebody with that condition may or may not be able to do. So Dr. Couples, could you tell us once again, what would an individual suffering from psychopathy be capable of doing? Well, because they view people differently, it makes them capable of extreme behavior, including violence, which would make them capable of shooting their best friend without remorse. Dr. Couples, let's go back to your page test for a minute. 
you mentioned that this test in particular analyzes several different personality traits. Could you tell the court exactly which traits you focused on with this test? The 10 traits the test looks for is persistent aggression, non-responsiveness to threats of punishment, defiance of authority figures, gratuitous or guiltless lying, petty theft, vandalism, cruelty to animals, indifference to the pain of others, cutting curfew, and early sexual experimentation. So let's talk about a few of those traits, Dr. Couples. Do you find any evidence present in Jesse Duran's case of him, of him being afflicted with dissent with his traits of non-responsiveness to threats of punishment? Um, well, I was talking with one of uh, Jesse's teachers. Now, in this particular instance, they were on a class field trip. They were at a zoo. And uh, Jesse and another student were caught throwing pine cones at squirrels. Now, the squirrels, they were in a caged in area, so they couldn't really go too far. The teacher caught the two students, called them out on it, and threatened to call their parents. Now, the first student, which to me seems like a control and acts consistent with how I would expect a child to act, she showed remorse. She broke down crying, begged the teacher not to call her mom, things like that. Now, Jesse is different. Jesse didn't show any remorse, or in fact, any reaction whatsoever. Let's talk about another trait, Dr. Couples. Did you find any reason to believe that Jesse showed a strong defiance of his authority figures? Uh, from an early age, I was talking with Jesse's babysitters. Uh, as early as the age of five, uh, the babysitter would ask Jesse to do something simple, like, for example, clean his room before he could play one of his video games. Now, Jesse would break into protest, which turned into a temper tantrum, which quickly escalated into a shouting match that would go for several hours. In the end, the babysitter would give in, and then Jesse would get exactly what he wanted while not having to give anything in return. The doctor, you mentioned that another trait that your test focuses on is gratuitous lying. Did you find any reason to believe that Jesse Durant was a gratuitous liar? I sat down during one of my interviews with the teachers. Uh, one of the teachers thought that Jesse's parent, Hayden, was a retired police officer. Now, Hayden has never worked for the police. Uh, I spent considerable time with my interview in my interview talking with uh, this teacher about this, and it turns out that Jesse, uh, back in third grade, had uh, convinced the teacher that uh, her mom actually was a retired police officer and had continued to tell this story all the way through the entirety time that the teacher knew him. Now, what this shows is that Jesse, who was only eight years old at the time, managed to convince an adult, an authority figure, of a lie for almost six years. Let's talk about this trait of persistent aggression, Dr. Couples. Did you find any evidence in this case that Jesse Duran had a trait of persistent aggression present with him? All of the people I talked to, all 20 people in my interviews, said Jesse had, was constantly pushing or shoving someone, even when it was necessary or unnecessary. This was corroborated by a cartoon that Jesse drew, and along with the suspension that Jesse was given. Dr. Couples, the suspension notice. Would you recognize this document today in court over to show it to you? I would. <coughs> Approaching opposing counsel, what has been constructively marked as plate to exhibit two? <coughs> Approaching with this the same. Would your honor like a courtesy copy? Can you tell the court what I just handed you, Dr. Couples? Uh, this is the notification of student discipline that I used in my evaluation for the trait of uh, persistent aggression for Jesse Duran. And does this copy appear to, appear to be a fair and accurate representation? It was the one I used in my evaluation. Your Honor, at this time, uh, I move to admit plaintiff exhibit two into evidence. I would object to hearsay, Your Honor. Your Honor, this document is not hearsay under Rule 801b2. This is, a, a, this is a statement by a party opponent. Now, since Hayden Durant has both signed and dated this document, Hayden Durant has, Hayden Durant has accepted this document to be true, and as such, it, is, it, is, it falls under that hearsay exception. May I respond, Your Honor? Uh, the rule um, that opposing counsel is referring to, 801D2B, uh, 
It states that, uh, that the individual, Ms. Hayden Rand, had to believe this to be true. Uh, her signature states that she agreed to implement discipline at home. At home. Nowhere in this document does, it, does she say that she agrees with the statement written above. For that reason, uh, this exception does not apply. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, since, Your Honor, we could find reason to believe that it is more likely true than not that Hayden Durant, that Hayden Durant accepted this document as true, as it is both signed and dated, and that Hayden Durant has not taken any action in the past to appeal this document or to contest its veracity. Since no action was taken by Hayden Durant in order to protest that this document is true, and since she has both signed, dated, and accepted the document, it is more likely true than not that she believes these statements to be true. May I ask why not? While opposing counsel may, may attempt to dive into those types of things, uh, she, the, the opposing counsel must first lay the foundation that, in fact, Ms. Durant uh, uh, believe this document to be true. And that foundation must be laid for this to uh, fall under the exception. I'm not going to allow the document itself. I, I don't think we've, I, I haven't heard an argument that convinces me that Hayden Duran actually accepted all this to be true. She did acknowledge it um, by signing it, but I don't think that goes so far as to, to adopt it as her own. Um, so I will not allow the document, um, and if, if there are things within the document that they continue to pursue, uh, we'll deal with those if there are objections. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. What's your witness, Your Honor? It's Dr. Couples, what information were you able to gain from reading the student, from reading of um, the information the student discipline notice of Jesse Durant? Well, the, uh, what I learned from the discipline, uh, Jesse was suspended for violent behavior during a... Your Honor, at this time I would object. Uh, pursuant to case law, Richards v. Mississippi Barbecue, uh, experts may not be used as a conduit to hearsay. May I respond to those grounds, Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, Dr. Couples is not currently acting as a conduit to hearsay, as no specific hearsay statements are being enlisted for the courtroom to hear. Dr. Couples is merely, going in, is merely delving into his conclusions, which are based upon that hearsay. Now, as per Rule 705, this is consistent with the rules of evidence, as an expert witness is allowed to use hearsay statements in order to reach his conclusions, as long as he does not specifically elicit those statements in court. Do you have any response to that? Yes, Your Honor. The opposing counsel is attempting to elicit specific statements uh, from the uh, document which you have ruled to be uh, inadmissible. Uh, for that reason, uh, pursuant to this case law, this question uh, will, will call for evidence that is not admissible. May I respond, Your Honor? What was the question you asked? Ask, um, Your Honor, I asked Dr. Couples what information he was able to learn from these documents. And what was his response? Or what will, uh, if you have to proffer, what will his response be? Your Honor, if I may proffer, Dr. Couples will go into stating that from the document he was able to learn that Jesse Duran acted in a way that was aggressive in the past, which will go to further his um, conclusions in the psychological determination. May I respond, Your Honor? Is his response going to be that general, just that you have learned from the document that there was aggressive acts in the past? Yes, Your Honor. He will not be stating verbatim any sentences or any testimony directly from the document. Well, I will allow that because I think it is general enough that he's not quoting hearsay. Um, he's not using lines from the document or anything that, that, or not, that I, I, I excluded the document. He's not going to use any specific statements from that. And I think that these, that generality is something that he rely upon. To that end, you make it to Dr. Couples, what, report, what important information were you able to learn from the student discipline notice? Well, the uh, aggressive behavior that was described in the disciplinary notice was uh, consistent with the behavior of persistent aggression, and it's not consistent with the kind of physical contact and intimacy uh, displayed by a child at Jesse's age. Dr. Couples, you also mentioned a drawing by Jesse Duran. If I were to show you a copy of this drawing today in court, would you recognize it? Yes, I would. Your Honor, approaching the opposing counsel, let us construct the remarks of Exhibit 3. Approaching the witness, Your Honor. Would Your Honor like to purchase a copy? 
Dr. Couples, can you tell the court what I just handed you? Uh, this is the uh, cartoon draw uh, drawing by Jesse Duran that I used in my evaluation. Does this representation appear to be a true and accurate copy of that cartoon? It's exactly like the one I used. Your Honor, I move to amend plate to the three in evidence. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, character evidence, pursuant to Rule 404A. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Be using this evidence to show that uh, uh, that because uh, Jesse wanted to use a gun in the past, that he would uh, acted inconsistent consistent with that desire on August 18th, 2010. Uh, this character, this would be a character trait, and therefore inadmissible. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, this would not be an improper use of character evidence pursuant to case law, the state of Hamilton v. Walton, as well as case law Longstreet v. Floyd. Now it's important to note that Dr. Couples is an expert witness who is using the information gleaned from this document in order to come to in order to come to a scientific psychological determination of Jesse Durant. Now, since this is going towards showing the presence of a psychological condition that makes any information from this document and this document as a whole exempt from the character from the character evidence prohibition. Yes. Uh, the, the case laws he's referring to is on, on page six. Uh, both of these case laws, uh, some, in summary, state that an expert such as Dr. Couples can testify about a psychological disorder. It does not, however, allow opposing counsel to ever to enter in the evidence uh, to support that an individual does, in fact, uh, have characteristics with that psychological condition. Dr. Couples can say, uh, just as Duran. Um, was a psychopath and, or, or suffered from psychopathy, and this could be how he acts, uh, but to, the case law does not allow opposing counsel to enter in um, evidence such as he is doing now. There's one, Your Honor. Well, and if the hang up is that it only allows for testimony and not evidence, I will disallow this as evidence, but he can testify about it. Yes, sir. Now, Dr. Couples, what information were you able to learn from the cartoon drawing? Um, it showed, well, there was one particular panel. It showed Jesse uh, using the gun, uh, was using the gun to scare other kids away. Now, this is not consistent with a child uh, behaving in this way. Objection, Your Honor. Again, character evidence. The testimony of Jesse Duran wanting to point a gun at other children uh, for the same argument I posed earlier. Uh, they're using this to show that Jesse acted in conformity with this character on August 18, 2010. I think this is going to um, something that he used to, to get to his diagnosis of psychopathy, and I think that would fall under the case law um, allowing for the expert testimony regarding his, the things that he used to get there. So I'll overrule the objection. Yes, Sean. So Dr. Couples, what usefulness was this document in your conclusions? Uh, it showed that uh, Jesse was drawing things not consistent with other children, typically of Jesse's age. So Dr. Couples, based on those character traits, were you able to come to any final conclusions about this case? Uh, there was enough presence, uh, enough character personality traits present in Jesse. Jesse scored a 12 out of 20 on the page test. So I diagnosed Jesse as suffering with psychopathy, which would make it possible for him to point a gun at Sydney Park, understand the consequences, but pull the trigger anyway. Thank you, Dr. Couples. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Before I have begin, I'd like to thank the courtroom up for a demonstrative aid.